Hi, everyone. We spend a lot of time talking about the ecological crisis and very little talking about solutions. Decarbonizing is not as simple as keeping fossil fuels in the ground and building solar farms. That's part of it, but we've been led to believe that that's all it takes and all we can do. In reality, it is much bigger than that. We are going to have to challenge the fundamentals of everything from how our cities and infrastructure are designed to what we value as a culture. There is a massive opportunity in harnessing capital, in improving human health and happiness, in advancing equity and dignified work, in ecosystem restoration, to get every single person involved in building the resilience we need in order to survive in a climate changed future. But how are we supposed to solve problems we don't even understand? We have been institutionally lied to about the true solutions to climate change. This crisis has been positioned as a battle between fossil fuels and renewable energy, and the climate movement has rallied around that. But we know for a fact that it is impossible to stay under two degrees of warming by building renewable energy. And that's not even considering that we are only building a fraction of what we could because of political stagnation. So in order to solve climate change, we are going to have to consume less energy. <laughs> Which requires transforming our entire economy, not just our energy grid. We're running a linear system of extracting resources from the earth, turning them into goods, shipping those goods all over the world, and then landfilling them and starting all over again on a planet with a limited amount of resources. This has been positioned as fossil fuels versus renewable energy, but the reality is that overconsumption by the global north is the root cause of the ecological crisis. <laughs> Two thirds of the world's carbon emissions are associated with household consumption. I will say this in the simplest possible way I can. In order to solve climate change, we have to produce less. Less cars, less clothing, less meat, less furniture, less tech, less mindless and meaningless stuff. We haven't been burning fossil fuels just for fun. We do it because it's profitable. Exxon and Shell are the arms dealers, but Amazon, Bank of America, and Louis Vuitton are the war generals. And you and I, as the consumers, are the unwitting army. It is past time for the environmental movement to rally around a new vision. What we need to begin working towards is a circular economy. We have to transition economic well-being from being dependent on extracting endless new resources from the earth towards keeping what we've already extracted in use for as long as possible. That's the path to decarbonization. A circular economy isn't about what we lose, it's about what we gain. It prioritizes investing in experiences and services rather than accumulating material possessions. I'm not just talking about a shift in spending, but a transformation in how we view growth and stability. An economy rooted in the tangible, finite natural resources turned into goods is inherently fragile. Global capitalism breaks every, what, eight or so years? An economy that thrives on the intangible, knowledge, experiences, services, could sustain itself with significantly lower energy and resource inputs. This is not an anti-business or anti-innovation stance. The circular economy actually opens the door for a new era of enterprise focused on human and ecological wellness. The renewable energy sector alone presents a $1.4 trillion opportunity over the next decade, but this shift must go beyond energy. It requires building secondhand markets and expanding repair industries. It involves investment in walkable cities, affordable housing and healthy foods, ecosystem restoration, and a revival of the rich and diverse cultures that came before mass production and homogeneity.
Most of the materials that make up the modern world, from this microphone to the sneakers I'm wearing, are derived from petroleum. To truly divest from fossil fuels, we need a revolution in biomanufacturing to replace toxic petrochemicals with innovative new materials that are good for both people and the planet. In the heart of the ecological crisis lies an opportunity to redefine success. Selling more, faster, cannot continue to be the aim of our global society. Building a circular economy means building a society rich not in possessions, but in community. This future is within our grasp, and it promises a quality of life far beyond the material. Transformation requires actionable steps. The empowerment of labor unions and a commitment to dignified work across the entire supply chain, not just Western countries. Half of the world's population lives on less than $7 a day. This is the backbone of our global economy, and it is shameful. We need policy reform that holds polluters accountable and enables the infrastructure shift we need for circularity. A cultural shift in Western societies towards reducing consumption, secondhand sourcing, creative reuse, and repair. A massive investment of capital into new innovation for sustainability. An ecosystem restoration facilitated by government mandates and funded by corporate reparations that create dignified work. I want to be very clear that the blame does not rest entirely, or even mostly, on those of us in the West who have been taught to aspire to a culture that is based on ugly secrets of extraction and exploitation. We have been the victims of a billion dollar marketing campaigns and trapped by infrastructure, like the defunding of mass public transit, that has limited our options. But we do need system change, and we have all the proof we need that the political system will not legislate on climate change. And the corporations are enthusiastically sprinting us towards ecological collapse. So someone in this equation has to make a change and it has to be us. We have to challenge the financial incentives that fuel climate change. There is no world in which polluters like Amazon and Shein are thriving and continuing to grow, and climate change is solved. Today's capitalists have built their entire discipline on a false foundation. They fundamentally do not understand, or maybe just don't care, that their whole damn system is built on, cannot survive without, and is actively destroying the natural environment. As super disasters rage more frequently, we have obviously run out of time for incremental changes and half measures. In a lot of ways, the cards have already been dealt. We cannot turn back the clock on the climate change we're already experiencing, or even avoid a lot of what's to come in the next few decades. But we still have an opportunity to prevent complete collapse. I am under no delusion that the path there won't be incredibly messy. But we have to aspire to an economy that doesn't just take from the planet, but gives back, creating a world where innovation, sustainability, and equity are interwoven into the fabric of our society. This idea, the circular economy, is not just a dream. It's our last chance at salvaging our species' future. As of this moment, our economy has us on track for three degrees of warming by 2100. We have two options. Either we change everything about our economy, built environment, and society, or we vanish. There is no third possible outcome. Thank you.